All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a pod review for you today on the pepper over here. And I've been eyeballing this one now for a while. And this is called the Peri Peri, right? Peri Peri or Wary Wary. I always get those mixed up. Uh, but this is a Peri Peri. I think the Wary Wary is, is another, they use that. It's another name for another pepper. It actually is no such thing as Wary Wary, but it's used as another name. But we'll go over that in the future sometime. But right now, today, we're going to do a review on the Peri Peri pepper. And it's a Bacanum, I believe it is. I don't see any flowers on it where I can just kind of eyeball it. Yeah, here we go. Right there. Come on. Focus. Right there. I don't know if my camera's focusing or not. But you can see the little marks on it, and that's a uh, bacadam. That's what you usually go by. Uh, if you're not sure, if you're like looking at a bacadam and you can't tell by the type of fruit that's on there or the type of leaf that's on there, and then you want to, you look at the flower, and that usually tells you what it is. And if you still can't tell what it is at that point, well, you usually know by the flavor. And that does, that's not 100% guaranteed to know if it's a true bacadam, but that's like 99% usually gets you all the way through. A lot of these bacadams, like the um, Ahi Santa Cruz's, uh, these peppers uh, don't have that bacadam flavor. They don't really taste bacadam like very little and uh, They taste more like an anum, but they are definitely a bacadam. You can see by the way they swing like a pendulum See how they swing Look how long that stem is on there. I'm digressing guys. That's uh, the ahi Santa Cruz by the way, that's a very good pepper uh, we'll, well, I have another video on that one. You can uh, go look that one up, but today we're gonna do a pod review on the Peri Peri, and it looks very similar to this pepper, but it's definitely not the same thing. Okay, and this pepper back here, and that's called the Ahi Peruvian. So it's definitely not the Ahi Peruvian. The Peri Peri is in a world of its own, and it's definitely got its own uniqueness to it. So that's it right there. That's the Peri Peri. I'll give you a little show and tell before I turn you around and give that a go. So let's turn you around and let's give that a go. All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a pod review today. It's going to be on this pepper right here. This is called the Peri Peri pepper. And I've been wanting to review this one now for quite a while. I just haven't had gotten around to it. I'm doing like 150 pod reviews a year on new varieties. And it, it You start to lose it after a while. You start losing track of what you're growing. Um, you start to lose track of what you reviewed, what you saved seed for. It's it's a challenge. Uh, you know, you're talking, I'm getting upwards near around 600 varieties of peppers that I've grown and or grow every few years. And uh, it's become a challenging. <laughs> I'm just curious at what is the limit for me. So this is one of those peppers that I've been wanting to do now for a while. I, and I just haven't gotten around to it again there's another pepper out there called the wary wary instead of a p it's with a w and i believe that's actually just a nickname for another variety of pepper i could be wrong i i don't know when we get down to those brass tacks we'll go over that and uh, we'll cover that name i'm pretty sure the peri peri is an individual pepper but i think it's a round pepper and not a uh bacadam it's it's an african pepper if i'm not mistaken it, may, it might even be uh, associated with the african bird pepper something bizarre like that but anyway here's this one and uh pretty sure this one's going to be a hot one this is a bacadam i showed you the flower on it it's a pretty hard pepper it's pretty hard so it's it, it I, I you know pretty confident it's going to be filled with seeds and it's going to be just be it's going to be one of the more ferocious burns of a bacadam but i could be wrong that's just my guesstimate after years of uh, growing these peppers, you kind of get an idea of what to expect. But usually when they're hard like this, and it's a bacadam, it's going to be the upper level of the bacadam heats. But bacadam heats generally range in, uh, they can range anywhere from like 100 all the way up to like maybe 30 or 40,000. 40,000 in the bacadam type of a burn is pretty intense. That would be equivalent to like 100, 150,000 of a chancy burn. It's just, it's the heat, the, the heat is just different. It's, I can't, I don't know any other way to explain it. 
30,000 in, in Bacadam is intense. That is very intense burn. That is very, that, like I said, 30,000, the way you would get burned on 30,000 on Bacadam would be like 100, 150,000 on, uh, on a uh, habanero or a, a chinensi burn or, or anum or something like that. Those kind of burns, you know, it takes more to get to that burn. This one, when you get 30,000 on this, that's nasty. So you, you can get them. I've had, I've had Bacadams that were theoretically that hot. So anyway, here it is. And uh, let's give it a bite. Mm, Bacadam flavor. A little bit of soap. A lot of soap. <clears throat> Let that heat build. And we'll go over the flavor. Now, flavor was kind of interesting. It had a Bacadam flavor to it. Still chewing it too, by the way. It had a bacadam flavor to it, but there had like a, um, I don't know if I want to use overtone or undertone, but I don't know any other way to kind of give you an idea of it, but like an undertone of like maybe a, a like slight cane flavor with an undertone of it very slightly. It had a uh, tangy effect to it. It was a little on the tangy acidy side, which was nice, but it had a it had that fruity bacadam flavor. And the fruity bacadam flavor, now when we talk about bacadams, it's Bacanums are not atypical when it comes to flavor. They all have a slight variation of flavor difference between one another. They, there's just, it's impossible for me to point it out. What I can tell you is that the flavor to this thing is slightly unique. It has a bacadam flavor, but there's also another flavor associated with it that makes it taste a little different than your typical bacadams, at least many of the bacadams that I grow. It just tastes different. I, I, I don't know any other way to, to uh, really put that. I mean, I can tell you that it's, um, you know, I can tell you that it's, um, you know, it tastes like this, tastes like, it's, it's hard to, to go. It's, like I said, it's bacadam, but it's slightly different. It's unique to itself. It has a certain flavor, and it's nice, too. Again, it has a, a an, an acidy flavor that comes in that, uh, you know, not, not all bacadams have that. A lot of bacadams are sweet, you know, and they're smooth. They're not acidy and kind of, you know. Now, let's talk about the heat. Those seeds get stuck in your mouth. Um, let's talk about the heat. Now, with the heat, the heat is pretty high in this thing. I'll probably put the heat between 15, 20,000 Scovilles, bacadam Scovilles. Again, when I talk about Bacadam Scovels, when, I, when I'm mentioning 20,000 on a Bacadam Scovel, that's pretty high. That's pretty intense. That's like 75,000, you know, 60,000 on a, on a Chinensi or Annaburn. It's up there. It's got, a, it's got a, some intensity to it. Now, what kind of a burn is it? It's got a typical kind of glowing, warm burning effect. But this one's a little bit more aggressive for a Bacadam. It's almost stingy, and it's really digging into the front half of my tongue, from the tip of the tongue back, a little bit on the gums, where the molars are, because I chewed it kind of good. I was chewing up the seeds and everything on there. Um, a little bit on there, and it's kind of a, it's a deep penetrating burn on the gums. Feels good, actually, to be honest with you. And the heat goes all the way to the back of the throat. Down the, uh, down the esophagus very slightly, and in the stomach I feel a little bit down there. feel a little bit. Not nauseous, but it's there. I know it's there. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way. Not nauseous, not, you know, it's just, it's, it's there. And um, it's not making me sick or anything, at least yet. It's not cramping up my gut. That, that part gets me worried because if I start getting a gut cramp, i got to suck down a glass of cream right away. And... Uh, if I if if that happens, you know, if, it doesn't mean I'm going to puke. It just gives me a cramp in my stomach. But this isn't doing that so far. It's getting close though. I, I do feel a little bit of cramping. It's a pretty intense bacadam burn. Like I said, between fifteen and twenty, maybe even slightly higher than that on this burn. Peri, the peri peri is a pretty kick butt type of burn for a bacadam. It's up there. It's almost numbing the tongue a little bit, but. It's definitely got that typical type of an effect when it comes to a bacadam burn. It's definitely um, 
glowing and it's just deep penetrating this one this one's just like you can feel it getting deeper and deeper into your tongue and your gums and stuff doesn't just hit it and then surface off or anything this hits it and it's like it's going just drilling itself in i guess because of the moisture in your mouth or something but wow that's a good one man that's a real good one for a little pepper like that man that thing's got some kick on it man but um yeah, it's a good pepper, guys. I would say uh, definitely give it a grow. Again, if you're a pepper collector and um, you like growing new varieties, it's a good one to grow. This is definitely something you should look into a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to add it to my repertoire of uh, pepper varieties that I grow. I'm definitely going to winter this one over, bring it out next year. We'll see how many pods will come off that thing. I'm sure it'll put out pods by the hundreds. Uh, this is that type of plant. The bacadums usually can put out... They're absolutely heavy producers. They can produce more pods than you normally could eat. And so uh, we will bring it outdoors next year and just see what it could do. But uh, whatever, what I'll do is I will leave whatever information I can find on the Internet in the description below. And you can read about it there. You could also visit the website and read about it there. And I'll leave you a link below. So you can uh, go to the website and purchase seeds if you want to give this one a grow. So um, definitely a good grow. Definitely worth investigating. But that's about it, guys. That was uh, your pod review for the Perry Perry. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.